What's up? This is Stephanie Platis here with CreatingWithin.com, the place to get in touch with your inner world. And today I want to discuss a little bit about jealousy and envy. And I want to share with you two tools that have helped me in my own inner world. But before I share those tools with you, let's talk a little bit about what envy and jealousy is. So envy is the desire for something that you do not have. It is what says, I want what you have. And therefore, we're acting on a belief that says that by having this thing that I do not have, it's going to bring me happiness. And that somehow, if I don't have this thing in which I want, it's going to diminish me in some way. Now, jealousy has a little bit more of the qualities of possessiveness, suspicion, and rage. Especially when it's out of control, it carries those components to it. And jealousy basically says that I want this thing usually deals more with people but I want this thing or this person that I feel belongs to me so it's a possessiveness it's wanting something because you feel like it's yours it belongs to you you want to own it you want to control it you want to possess it jealousy is based on fear it's a fear-based energy on scarcity on feeling insecure on feeling like you can't have what you want or that you can't keep something that you have it's you're in constant anxiety anticipating the worst to come it's not a very fun energy at all now both jealousy and envy lead to resentment and resentment basically says well why do you have what you have? Why do you look the way that you look? Why don't I look like you? Why don't I have the money that you have? Why don't I have the clothes that you have? And resentment is a springboard for anger, hatred, and eventually leads to depression. Now, what do these three things all have in common? The common thread between envy, jealousy, and resentment is comparison. When we are comparing ourselves to others, we are opening the floodgates to allow ourselves to become susceptible to envy, to jealousy, and to resentment, which then bring a whole range of other emotions that are not very helpful and will get us into very low vibrations and into powerless mode and into victim mode. I know that we hear this a lot, you know, don't compare yourself to others, but honestly, really, it's a waste of time for us to compare ourselves to others, and I'm going to tell you why. Because if you think about it, one of the 12 laws of the universe is the law of relativity. And the law of relativity says that there is nothing good or bad. Everything is simply just relative. Now think about this. Let's say you have a dog and when, by comparing your dog to your neighbor's dog, in comparison to your neighbor's dog, your dog is large. But now if you were to compare your dog to your sister's dog, in comparison to your sister's dog, your dog is small. So... Is your dog really small or is it really big? Again, it's all relative. Here's another example. You may consider yourself poor because maybe let's say you're making $24,000 a year, but to someone in another country who's making maybe $100 a month, when they compare themselves to you, you are beyond wealthy, beyond imagination. So, what is wealth? Who is really wealthy? Again, it is all relative because it is all how you're comparing yourself and to what. So here's something that I used to do when I was younger and I didn't even realize that this was actually a really good tool. I'm not an advocate of comparison, but it's human nature that we're going to compare from time to time. So if you are going to compare yourself, then use the law of relativity to help you. And rather than comparing yourself to someone who has more than you, be diligent in choosing how and with who you compare yourself to. So you can use you can compare yourself and and use it to benefit you in a way where you compare yourself to somebody who has less than you. That way you're always in a in an attitude of gratitude and appreciation because when you compare yourself to someone who has less than you, you're going to be grateful for what you have. When you're comparing yourself to someone who has more than you, you're going to always feel bad about yourself. You're going to lead into that resentment, which will lead into anger. And the more you dig into it, all those other emotions we talked about. So if you do need to compare yourself to someone, if you find yourself comparing, then always compare yourself to someone who has less than you. Now, this can also be a slippery slope because when I was younger, 
I remember sometimes I would feel bad or maybe I would think about my father and having my father around and it would make me feel sad. And how I would get myself out of it was like, no, Stephanie, like, don't feel bad. You're not a victim. There are people out there who have it worse than you. And I would always think of people who had it worse than me so that I wouldn't allow myself to fall into victim mode. And now that was a really good tool. However, I also know that it can be a slippery slope to bypassing our feelings and to not allowing ourselves to feel what it is that we feel because we're comparing ourselves to someone else and thereby we can easily invalidate our own feelings. So you also have to be careful of that when you're comparing yourself to someone who has less than you. Do not invalidate your feelings in the process. Recognize how you're feeling. But when you are comparing yourself to someone, if you compare yourself to someone who has less, it's only for the purpose of appreciating what you have, but not to invalidate or, pa or bypass how you're actually feeling about something in your life. Now, another tool that really helped me when it comes to like envy or jealousy growing up was the fact that rather than looking at someone and saying, oh man, this person, you know, they're so pretty or they're so smart or they're so independent or they communicate so well. God, I just like hate them, man, because I wish I was that way and I'm not that way. And now, you know, I start being jealous or envious towards them because I want what they have that I feel that I don't have. So instead of doing that, I have this keen ability to see the best in people and to see their best qualities. So rather than being jealous or envious because someone maybe can communicate or has better communication skills than, than myself, I would look at them and say, man, this person really communicates really well. I like that, I want that. But I would approach it from a place of incorporating those things that I admired in other people into myself and I would use that to make myself better, but rather than making myself feel bad, I would just say, okay, I like this quality about this person, I like this quality about this person, I admire this. And I would take the different aspects of people that I would find and I would appreciate, that I felt that I was lacking within myself, and I would try to bring that energy and bring more of those qualities into myself. And I still do that. So when you look at someone that has something that you want. Catch yourself and rather than being envious or jealous because they have something that you don't have but want, admire them for them. And in admiring them for them, you will start bringing that quality more into yourself. And now look around you, look at all the people that have everything that you don't have and start embodying those qualities that you want, bringing them into your life through admiration rather than jealousy and envy. So I hope that this video has been helpful and that you're able to use these tools to empower you in your life. And um, I'll talk to you guys soon. In the meantime, like always, continue to communicate, connect, and create. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.